Hello and welcome back to The Watch Guys. I hope you are safe and well. This week's episode is all about my Studio Underdog collection, an independent watch brand created in 2020 that helped lift the gloom of a global pandemic lockdown with its first watch, the iconic Watermelon. I now own five Studio Underdog watches and so I thought it was about time that I took you through each one. The story of this exciting new independent watch brand, the ones I don't own, and why I think every watch collector should have a Studio Underdog in their collection. Many of you have asked to see some of the more affordable watches in my collection, so let's do this. First of all, thank you to all of you who have subscribed to this channel, which has just recently passed the 20,000 mark. A real milestone for a private collector who occasionally makes watch films. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, my Studio Underdog collection. And as you can see, it's a veritable orgy of colour, detail and texture. Bright colours everywhere, soft shades, but an overwhelming sense of positivity, enthusiasm and hope. These are joyous watches that inspire smiles, engagement and good times. They are summer watches, they're informal watches, they are fun. The watermelon is already an iconic design. How many companies hit the jackpot with their very first product? And how many more dream of creating something as iconic and potentially long lasting as this? That's part of the reason I wanted to tell the story in this episode and to celebrate the watches I have in my collection. I first became aware of Studio Underdog through the Scottish Watches podcast, where founder Richard Benk was interviewed and I managed to secure a watermelon. From that moment onwards, I was hooked. All of the company's watches are available from its website and you can also now buy them from James Porter & Son, a bricks and mortar watch retailer. And that's really important because you really need to see these watches in the flesh to understand how the colours and the detail work in the real world. But before we get too far into this episode, let's do a quick wristwatch check. And under the black jumper this week, I have a Rolex Cosmograph Daytona. Now this is a white gold model. It's 40 millimeters and it's reference 116509. This is a 2022 watch. And as you can see, it looks very spookily similar to a classic 1963 or 64 Daytona. And that's why I absolutely love it. The silvery dial is called Steel Baton, and as you can see, it's got contrasting black hour markers. This is a brand new, bang up to date, modern Rolex that looks like one of those early classics. And that, my friends, is why it's in my collection. The timeline of Studio Underdog is refreshingly brief because it's a young company, only two years old, and yet we have a portfolio that is truly exciting. This is the story of Richard Benk, a designer and entrepreneur who began designing fashion watches straight out of college, but then created a new independent watch brand of his own during the global pandemic. Yes, that's right, while most of us were sat on our asses binge watching Below Deck and Ozark and getting fat on delivery takeaways and trying to complete the last level on Last of Us Part 2, Richard Benk was creating a watch sensation with the watermelon. After an enthusiastic response to his initial watermelon designs shared on Facebook, Benk launched a Kickstarter project. When it closed, it raised an incredible £90,000 in 16 days, 400% overfunded. And right there, Studio Underdog was born. The first three watches were the Watermelon, the Desert Sky and the Goofy Panda. And as you can see, the majority opted for the Watermelon as their preferred colour scheme. And they can be purchased to this day. On the 9th of November 2021, the Mint Choc Chip was announced and quickly sold out. And then on the 1st of April 2022, Studio Underdog launched the 50-piece limited edition Fratello Aubergine. And never want to miss out on a spot of good-natured mischief for a good cause, all profits went to a charity for testicular cancer. Not surprisingly, that sold out instantly, and I didn't get one. But more about that later on. August 22 saw the Strawberries and Cream launched, a time-limited special edition with a red and cream dial. 2022 ended for Studio Underdog with a pumpkin, the limited two of two special, and one of the reasons why Studio Underdog is such a special watchmaker. 
So let me take you through my entire Studio Underdog collection and I should point out right off the bat that I do not own a Goofy Panda. I know, I know, my OCD and desire for completeness should really have kicked in by now. But for some reason, and despite it being black and white, like, you know, a panda, and despite the fact that it has a touch of green on the second's hand, because, you know, pandas eat bamboo, I just haven't connected with it. I also don't own the limited edition pumpkin that you see here. Isn't it cool? But the reason for that is a little bit more understandable. There are only two of them in the world. One was given to the little girl who came up with the design, and the other one was only ever made available to the public via a auction for the Mary's Meals charity. And I didn't win it. And that means as good as my Studio Underdog collection is, I will never own them all. But here are the ones that I do own. And here it is, my first ever Studio Underdog watch. And it is, of course, the iconic watermelon. It's hard to explain what a breath of fresh air this was during the dark days of the pandemic. This was a vibrant watch full of hope, quirky design touches, and it was affordable, and it seemed to be everywhere on social media in 2021. Look at how perfectly judged the color scheme is on the dial. The shades of scientific green on the tachymetric scale around the edge and the second subdial. The slight texture on the dial emulating the ridges found on the real fruit. The slight graduation from light salmon in the middle to the richer red on the outer side. Notice also how the hour markers are shaped like watermelon pips. A signature touch that Benk experimented with when he was designing fashion watches like this Star Wars design. The sapphire glass exposed case back shows off the Seagull ST190 manual chronograph movement. Yes, that comes from China, but if you dig further, it's actually a Swiss Venus 175 movement from the 1940s, which the Chinese bought the tooling for in the 60s and is used in many modern watches. Why did Benk go for manual wind movements in all of his watches? Well, the obvious cachet with collectors who love a good manual. Without the rotor obscuring the mechanics, it's also a good looking movement which benefits from the open case back. And finally, Benk believes that having to interact with the watches on an almost daily basis means you spend more time looking at the watch and studying its design. The watermelon is water resistant to 50 meters. It features a 38.5 millimeter steel case, which is a great size and sits well on the wrist. And it has a 45 hour power reserve. All of the initial Studio Underdog range are chronographs, which means you get a chrono hand operated with the two buttons on the side of the case. The top one to stop and start the timer, and the bottom one to reset it to the 12 o'clock position. The calfskin black outer strap with tan inner comes courtesy of David Richards, the Strap Tailor. It's comfortable, slender, and it allows the bright dial to dominate. It's especially interesting that Benk chose to not go full watermelon. That's the difference between great design and something you win at a fun fair. Since the watermelon is what Studio Underdog is known for, this has to be the one you should add to your collection. And I have a funny feeling that we're gonna be talking about this watch in 20 years. To tell you the truth, I was a bit late to the party with the desert sky. But once again, Richard Benk's eye for harmonious colours and texture comes to the fore with this cool blue beauty, which was actually inspired by these Nike trainers. Like the watermelon, you have the degradé roughened dial texture, which in this case has a blue sky graduated colour scheme matched with a light brown cappuccino outer and shaded second subdial. It's a symphony of old Hollywood meets Amelia Earhart, and it feels like the perfect explorer watch, particularly with the weathered effect taupe Epsom calfskin strap. Once again, it's got the Seagull ST1901 movement, it's manual winding, and it has a 38.5 millimeter steel case. The Desert Sky is not limited at all, it's part of Studio Underdog's perennial range, so you can actually pick one of these up in the future. However, they are produced in small initial quantities or batches, which means you might have to wait for one. But it is well worth it. I have to confess, I didn't immediately jump on this mint choc chip either, when it was first announced and sold out in eight minutes. In flat pictures it looked great, but not something I needed in the collection. But then I went to the Watch Pro show and I actually met Richard Benk in person and he was wearing 
one of these. I had the watermelon, he had one of these. And when you see a mint choc chip in the flesh, whew, it just blows your mind. The mint choc chip has a delicious vintage vibe created by that off-cream tachymetric scale reflected and distorted in the crystal. It's the perfect accompaniment to the mint dapple dial and on the wrist it takes on an almost art deco quality. And you'll notice the brown goatskin strap to complement the design. And of course in the grand tradition of Studio Underdog when it comes to detail the hour markers are little chunks of chocolate. Frankly it was love at first sight and I had to have one. And as you can see, now I do. This is a watch for me that's actually one of the real jewels in the Studio Underdog lineup. It is so timeless, that particular colour scheme just works. And it's a pleasure to wear. It's so subtle, it hurts. Now this is an odd one and it has a very specific story attached to it. One of the things I really like about Studio Underdog is its sense of humour and the ability to react to things quickly and appropriately. This happened on April Fool's Day 2021 with an Instagram post announcing its new watch, the Aubergine, with real aged fruit on the dial. It was a joke of course, but one that actually came true thanks to a charity partnership with Fratello Watches. The real Aubergine was announced and limited to just 50 pieces with all proceeds going to cancer research. In order to get one of these, you had to sign up to Fratello's email newsletter and await a password just before the 1st of April. Like hundreds of others, I actually did this, and the second the watch became available to order, quick as a flash, I inputted the password and started the ordering process. This, though, is where it all began to go wrong because it turned out even if you were lucky enough to get the password and actually select to buy the watch before they were all sold out, that didn't secure the watch whilst you entered the bank details. Nope, turns out that the stock of just 50 pieces was rapidly depleting to those people double clicking on Apple Pay or using a bot. And so by the time I'd entered my credit card details, they were all gone. To put it mildly 007, I was apoplectic. And as it turned out, some watch flipping bastard had managed to get my watch because that's exactly how I actually managed to get this one. Yes, in order to get this watch, I had to barter with someone and pay over the odds. As it turned out though, not much more than the original price, thank goodness, but still, it should never have happened. It's also especially funny that the person I bought this watch from tried to sell it on eBay first for £3,000. And here it is, a deep purple and vivid tree frog green wrist statement that pops during the winter and looks like nothing else in the watch world. I like that it's very rare and that it's part of Studio Underdog's core history. I like that it wasn't part of a huge corporate strategy. It was just a bit of fun. And I like the fact that it's absolutely and completely bonkers. This is the last of my Studio Underdogs. And again, it's a limited edition but this time limited by time, not actual numbers. If you didn't order one within a week, you missed out, and now it's discontinued forever. The Strawberries and Cream is another perfectly judged summer watch that takes the rich palette and visual cues of the archetypal British dish, Strawberries and Cream, served whilst watching tennis at Wimbledon. So you get a lush, fleshy red for the centre of the dial, a dollop of Cornish clotted cream coloured outer, and the colour markers emulate the pips of the fruit. It was also the first Studio Underdog watch to come with two straps, a light brown leather and a metal mesh strap, so that you can change the look of your watch at your leisure. It's also the reason why it's £75 more expensive than the other watches in the range. As you can see, it's bright, friendly, eye-catching and another winner from Studio Underdog, a unique watch from a unique watch company. Out of all those in my collection, probably the Strawberries and Cream is my least favourite. I don't think it works quite as well as the others, but it's up against stiff competition because the others have all got very specific stories to them. And now it's time to go into Unboxo Vision. Let's unpack one of these Studio Underdog watches from scratch. We'll start with obviously the watermelon. As you can see, the Studio Underdogs come in quite an unassuming cardboard little box there with the company's logo on it. 
nice and simple. Inside, wrapped up in some special wrapping paper with the zero from the underdog logo in it. Nice little design touch. There's a little tool there to help you bend the strap around your skin and to loosen up the strap. Inside the little pouch, we've got a personal message here from Richard and also the testing report for accuracy and instructions as to how to use the watch. Open up the wrapping paper itself and you've got a black leather pouch there embossed with the company logo. And inside, when you pop it open, is the watermelon. As you can see, very simple, unassuming packaging for a very humble yet very special watch. So there you go, that's my entire Studio Underdog collection, and I'm only missing two of the company's entire range so far. Unfortunately though, without the pumpkin, it will never be complete. Let me know what you think of these watches in the comments section, and whether you think I am mad for collecting so many. I'm certainly looking forward to what the company has to offer in the future. I'm particularly interested to see how Richard Benk moves from this very distinct visual style into the next phase of the company. What the new designs, what new watches, what new styles of watches will he create in the future? I certainly will be watching eagerly. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode on my Studio Underdog collection. I appreciate it's a different price point than sometimes you tune in for, and I appreciate that they're quite wacky and very individual, but I hope I've opened your eyes to this exciting new watch brand. If you like what I'm doing on the channel, please subscribe. Thank you so much for helping us reach 20,000 subscribers, but let's keep on going. Leave comments and likes, and there'll be another episode at some point in the future.